Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of the Phil Sinclair Investigates podcast. This episode I want to touch on the, the stories, the experiences of what's been called the Hat Man. Now I wanted to touch on this subject because I myself have been experiencing par- sleep par- paralysis and really frightening experiences when I do, you know, succumb to these spells of horrible, absolutely horrible. I I can't move when this is happening and it is sleep paralysis. And I've been doing a little bit of research looking at people's thoughts and people's experiences and this has brought me on to the hat man strangely enough as i've been doing conducting this research on my amazon prime on my suggested viewing on amazon prime prime video a documentary popped up called the hat man coincidence or not i've delved in to this documentary and people have been experiencing the same as I have although my experience I woke up with wounds on my hands which I posted about on my social media last week now have I in this episode have I been clawing at my own hand thinking that somebody's grabbed me or or, or as, as something as something paranormal being there might sound a little bit might sound a little bit odd might sound a little bit crazy but my theory personally is that I will have been probably throwing my hand around while asleep clawing at my own hand but there's some people out there that seem to think that it could be something paranormal whether it's something i've picked up on an investigation or such like so this documentary on amazon prime i highly recommend you go and watch this it's called the hat man it's a true reality tv style documentary i have borrowed little segments from this said documentary of people's I've borrowed a just some experiences from people and from a researchers point of view so the first experience you're going to listen to now is from a lady called Lee and she basically sums up what the hat man experience is like I say, I'm not going to. I'm not playing the whole thing because I want you to watch this documentary. This is full of people's experiences. I've just taken little segments for you to listen to. If maybe it will help you if you suffer from these such things yourself. So this segment you're going to listen to is a description of the hat, the hat man by a lady called Lee. When I was seven years old, uh, my family and I, we moved into this old, old house. It was nearly a hundred years old. And we had seen all kinds of things. Like the first time I ever had a ghost encounter, I was also seven years old. All these experiences I had were nothing in comparison to the hat man. I don't know why. I, I don't even know what the hat man is. So I was, it was just, I don't know why it was so terrifying and why it still keeps me up at night sometimes. But it, I don't, it just has this very heavy negative force to it. And I don't want anyone to experience it because it's awful. So I was seven years old and This is the first time I've ever had my own bedroom to myself. My family, they all live upstairs and I'm the only one downstairs. And I'm just sitting in my bed and 
I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, I just drew this really strong, I just like all of a sudden really noticed my closet. And I'm just staring at it and I'm basically like frozen, like I can't move. And the door on the closet slowly creaks open. And this black figure is just standing there, really tall, staring at me. And I was just staring right back at it. It's just this dark black silhouette. It slowly starts to creep out of the closet. And I just, I freak and I just jump and I'm like hiding underneath my covers and I'm shaking. I can't breathe properly, right? You know, after a while, I'm like, okay, no, this is just, this is just my imagination. This is nothing. And so I finally work up the courage and I peek through my covers. And it's there, but it's closer now. It's like right at the edge of my bed, just staring. And once again, I'm just filled with this disgusting, black, dark feeling. And it's, it's just the worst feeling I've ever experienced. I keep saying I'm terrified, but I just, I can't express how terrifying it was like it was the worst thing like that's ever happened but yeah so i I peel open my covers one more time I could move, but I couldn't. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I just couldn't leave my bed. I was just stuck in my bed. And it just really wanted me to know, like, it was there and it was watching me. I guess for the weird thing is for some people, the hat man is just like a sleep paralysis figure. But for me, like, I've seen him plenty of times when I'm, like, awake or not even in my own bed. Like, I'll be walking around the house or I'll be, I don't know, like out with friends or something. I don't really, I don't, I don't really know how to explain how he stares at you because he's just this tall black silhouette. And so it's like, you can't see his, any of his features. You can't see like the buttons on his jacket. You can't see his nose or his eyes or his mouth. You can't see anything, but you know, like, it's staring right at you. That was um, Lee's experience. It was very, very terrifying. Very much like... It's more terrifying than my personal experience because my personal experience, I don't... I can't tell what my attacker is or who's in the room with me. I don't know. I don't know who it is, but I know it's something and I'm scared to death of whatever this is you know i'm terrified but i don't i it's not a hat man for me it's just my inner fears attacking me but i could don't know all i know personally is that it's not a hat man that might change but there seems to be a lot around the globe of people experiencing this hat man figure standing in the corner of the room wearing this long trench coat and this hat it's it's absolutely terrifying and god bless these people for sharing their experiences and who may be still who may be still dealing with these things to this day you know but what we're going to hear from now is we're going to hear more in insight into the hat man and this is a researcher who, by the name of Mary, Rosemary, and she is 
going to tell you guys now. She's gone into it a little bit more in depth. And she's researched into the Hatman experiences. And she's going to tell you guys right now of her findings and more insight into what the Hatman experience might be. I started researching shadow people in depth in 2004. This research started as a result of getting a lot of emails and inquiries in a short period of time from people describing pretty much the same kind of experience, a bedroom invasion by a dark entity that looked like a tall man wearing a cape or a coat and often with a hat. These were terrifying encounters for people and they were wondering, what is this entity? What does it want? How do I make it go away? There are different types of shadow people. There is what I call a core experience. And this is the bedroom invasion, where a person wakes up, usually in the middle of the night, to find in their doorway or by the bed, what they first might think is a person. It's a very dark silhouette that looks like a man, six to, about six to seven feet tall, wearing a coat or a cape and often a hat. There are no features. Uh, sometimes people see eyes, but usually uh, they're featureless. And these figures radiate an intense amount of malevolence. People feel very frightened, like they're going to be attacked. Sometimes the entity doesn't attack, it just observes, which is quite terrifying. And sometimes it does attack by jumping on the person in bed, <laughs> attempting to choke or suffocate them. The odd thing about these entities is that they seem to have mass when they want, and they seem to be able to be paraphysical when they want. That is, if they reach out and attack someone, uh, the individual feels like they're being assaulted by a very uh, muscular, heavy human being. But when these entities want to disappear, they will go through walls, windows, they will disappear as smoke, vapor, they will uh, slide under the bed, go into the closet where they disappear. So they seem to have the capability of being physical in our realm, and yet uh, they can defy the laws, natural laws of physics at the same time. I wondered for a long time, why do these entities need to wear hats? And usually the hats are crazy hats. They're out of fashion, they're weird looking, uh, they range from uh, old-fashioned stereotype detective hats to floppy hats, almost like fedoras stovepipe hats like the Victorians wore, cowboy hats. Why does an entity need to wear a hat? Well, there are two possible reasons. And one is that these are intelligent uh, entities. Uh, they are very smart. They know exactly how to engage with people. They know what they want. And they may have figured out that their silhouette looks a little more terrifying, or maybe even a lot more terrifying, if they're wearing a hat. Hats are often symbols of authority. But I think that it has more to do with how they shape shift because uh, the jinn have really no physical form. Uh, they can shape shift into any form they want. And these seem to be for a variety of reasons. The jinn have indicated interest in generational bloodlines for their own purposes. And so they follow families, and wherever those family members go, wherever they move, whoever the descendants are, there seems to be a pattern of these kinds of experiences that plague them. Uh, then there are shadow people who attach to individuals on a temporary basis. They're very drawn to negative emotions. And so if a person goes through a lot of upheaval in life, like uh, disease, uh, a financial issue, a divorce, uh, loss of a job, something that really upsets them and turns their personal life into chaos. Uh, this is likely to generate depression, uh, unhappiness, a sense of hopelessness, and also anger. All of these emotions are very attractive to the gin because they can feed off those emotions. Individuals going through these kinds of crises may find themselves attacked at, at night by these literally energy vampires. And when they are able to recover and get their lives back into a better balance, then there's nothing for these beings to come for and they go away.
Okay, that was Rosemary's description of her research she's been conducting on the Hatman experience. I hope she's helping people out there with who's having these experiences on a, a, a nightly occurrence, you know. It must be absolutely awful for these people. When it happens to me, it's once in a blue moon, but it's very, very... It, it stays with you when these... But what is it? You know, what is the hat man? You know, and I hope Rosemary's experience, uh, research... I hope she gets to the bottom of it, you know? And I keep having these brief pauses because I just can't comprehend what it must be like for these people. And these people doing this documentary have been completely honest and they're sharing what, what people might think are really crazy and out there experiences. But to have that, to have the strength to tell these, it's, I, you've got to, you've got to respect. But what is the hat man? You know, I'm here to find out why it's a person in a hat and a trench coat, what keeps coming into these people's homes and just staring at them. Okay. People, skeptics out there seem to think that it's just the imagination. And it's, and it's most likely with me, it's most like I'm a big horror I'm a big horror guy and I like horror movies and I always have since being a child. When I was a child, I used to go into the um, the video rental store and I used to gravitate to the horror section. There was something about the horror section that I was glut. You had your cartoons and you had your, you know, you had your comedies and your things like that, but it was me horror and I would look used to look at all these covers and be like wow what what is going you know these look oh my god I've got to watch that like watch it seeing things like Freddy Krueger I seem to remember the Freddy's Dead film from the early 90s and the front cover with his with his claw and his clothes all bundled up and and that is, but oh, I've got to watch this. So this looks. Who is this guy? Who's this man with the hat and the claw in his hand? And yeah, so I'm big horror guy. So I'm watching. I'm nightly watching and watching all these, ex experiencing all these horrible things happening. Ghosts, people getting killed, blood, gore. You know, and. Are these subconsciously getting into my head and then I'm manifesting them as that as an attack in my dreams? You know? And this is what I my this is what I personally believe it could be. But then I've got wounds on my hands. You know, so if I'm, only way I've done that is by doing it to myself. It's but I am the the paranormal investigator in me is what if it is something something demonic what if it is an evil negative entity which is you know clawing at me in, in the night I know it's crazy guys you know it's 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 madness but we don't know how the human mind fully know how the human mind works when it comes to dreams and when it comes to things like the paranormal and what we're going to listen to we're going to go back to the lady we've just listened to in the last segment and she's going to touch on films and she's going to and she's going to tell about how in films they have accurately described this hat man figure you know, so they, she's going to talk about the Babadook and she's going to talk about the Conjuring, the crooked mad, uh, man, sorry. And, um, yeah, so we're going to listen to her and she's going to tell how she can't watch these films because they they accurately remind her of her nightly experience she, she has with the, the hat man. Pretty crazy stuff, so let's listen to this. You know, after you mentioned Babadook to me last time, I actually rented that and watched it. 
Uh, my girlfriend had rented it before, but I didn't watch it. Um, but I watched it. And the similarities on that, I had to get up out of the room. I had to leave the room. I couldn't watch it because it, all I seen was him standing there uh, in that television and doing those things. Like I could literally picture him honestly doing that to somebody. And the similarities of these characters that they're making now are so, it, it's so real. So the, the, the visions I've seen of him and then the, what they're making on TV, it's too, it's too real to me um, to sit and watch those. I can't do it. it. I have to get up and leave the room and come back and try to do it again. And I, my panic and anxiety level go through the roof when I watch it. His photo and his image is coming up everywhere and everything. And I'm sure not all these people have seen it, right? So they've got to get the idea from somewhere or the thought has came into their mind from something or someone. I honestly think he can do whatever he wants to do to influence somebody to to visualize and to create a character that is him. He's the devil. He can do whatever the hell he wants. That reminds me of um, the Crooked Man from The Conjuring 2. Um, how accurate or how close is he to that character? Almost spot on when I tell you spot on with the smile, the eyes, the hat, the clothes, the height, the arms, the legs. Um, it was really hard for me to watch that. And it's really hard for me to look at pictures of that Um Right now, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm shaking just thinking about it. Um, it's whoever did that. Um, I don't know if they knew what the hell they were doing, but they brought him to life in that character. Uh, he, yeah, they brought, that's almost spot on looking. Very interesting, that segment. Films, is it things we're watching which is subconsciously sticking with us and which is causing the manifestation of the hat man, if the hat man is a manifestation? Is it just you think you're awake, but you're not, you're still asleep? And these things are just seem to be appearing in the room. Why the hat? Why the? Why is the man wearing a hat? Why is he wearing a trench coat? Some people believe that you know it is it is symbolism of Freddy Krueger. Scared a lot of people in the eighties. You know, widespread terror. This film had caused to a lot of people. And he wears a hat. But what I'm interested in is I want to... I I still don't know who this hat man is. But I'm very, very interested in it. And I want to hear your thoughts. Okay, guys. So on my social media, I will put a post out. And I want you guys to leave your experiences, your thoughts, your scepticisms. And things like that. So... I hope you've enjoyed this Phil Sinclair Investigates podcast episode. And and thank you so much for listening. If you're still here listening this far, thank you. And don't forget to watch on Amazon Prime the Hat Man documentary. If you've got an Amazon Prime subscription, Prime Video subscription to watch movies, and TV shows, watch the hat man, very terrifying, just these are real life experiences and it's, it's more terrifying than an actual horror film you will watch, so and thank you to the people on the documentary which has given their thoughts, their experiences and thank you for sharing those with us, 
Those experiences help people who suffer from sleep paralysis on a regular basis. You are not alone. I have not made this episode to embarrass people, make fun of people. This is just to help people with these experiences and maybe let's not watch as many horror films as we do, potentially. You know, that's probably the case for me because my imagination is pretty crazy. But that doesn't explain why it's a hat man in the corner of the room. Maybe you guys out there might experience the same thing, but it's not a hat man and it's something else. Maybe it's a different person which comes and visits you. You know. Just let me know and don't be afraid to speak out. And thanks again for listening to the Phil Sinclair Investigates podcast.